or for sharing is passion for harvest. Passion for harvest. In the text of our sharing is Luke chapter 19. This is, I mean, verse 20. Luke chapter 19 and verse 20. The Bible reads, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Let us pray. Father, empower me now as I share your will. Use me for your glory. My total dependence is in you, O God. Enable me now to deliver your will. Open our hearts so that your word will be imprinted in us and cause us to win the United States and the whole wide world through the power of the gospel to you and for your glory. We thank you, Lord, for your presence with us. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Passion for harvest. God desires that everyone, every town, every county, Every city, every state, every nation, every continent be reached with the life transforming power of the gospel. God looks for men and the women who share a passion for those people out there without Christ. The verses we have read says that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4, the Bible states, God wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, the Bible also states, God does not want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to the knowledge, to come to the repentance. Beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, everyone means everyone. God does not want anyone to perish, but everyone come to repentance. I pray that you will fully experience God's passion for millions and billions around the world who are still waiting to hear that they too are loved by God. 
I pray that God's passion for harvest become our passion. I pray that God's focus of wanting all men to come to the knowledge of truth becomes our focus. I pray that God's burden of not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance becomes our burden. I pray that God primary purpose of seeking and serving what is lost remain to be our primary purpose as the body of Christ. God's vision for us as a church both individually and corporately is to be more passionate for harvest than ever. The person who is passionate for souls is the one who is connected with God through caring for the lost through evangelism. You see, brothers and sisters of the Lord, of Jesus' power, God is out there looking for men and women, looking for young and old, who will receive a great vision of harvest from him. Who will be able to create great set goals of harvest. Many the women who will be able to create practical strategies of harvest. Men and the women who will not live in excuses as to why not to. But men and the women who will be able to overcome all the obstacles of harvest. God is looking for men and women who will go out and sensitize, bring awareness, cast a vision, and mobilize the church to reach our world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let that man and the women be you. Amen. I believe God has brought you here and made up a purpose. Yes. Beyond what you think and beyond what you imagine. In today's message, we will look at two things. First, the meaning of passion. And second, we will review the historical examples of passion for others. First, let us define 
what is fashion. And I will define it in two ways. Number one, by looking at the general definition. And number two, by looking at the biblical definition. First, let us start by looking at the general definition. Fashion is defined as what you hunger for so intensely that you will sacrifice anything to have it. What you hunger for so intensely that you will sacrifice everything to have it. The root word of passion in the Latin means to suffer for. You are willing to suffer for it. You are willing to pay a price for it. Passion is a force burning in you which seizes you which captures you you become literally captivated by it when you walk you are captivated by it when you sit down you are captivated by it when you lie lay down, you are captivated with it. Passion is a force burning in you which seizes you. Passion is a power that moves you beyond ordinary human activity. You see, brothers and sisters of Jesus' power, we are all tired with ordinary harvest. It's time now, <coughs> like in the book of Acts, move into extraordinary harvest. We are tired with natural harvest. It is time now, as in the book of Acts, we move into supernatural harvest. And I'm here to announce to you the days of supernatural harvest has come. I mean in the days of extraordinary harvest has come. Let us seize the opportunity of the day. Hallelujah. Passion will not let you go until God's goals are reached. And we know God's goal is that He wants all men to be saved. Passion will never ever let you go until God's goal of harvest are reached. Passion is the fire and the urgency that vision needs to remain alive, active, and well until God's mission, God's purpose 
of harvest and riches. Let us now look at biblical definition. For Prophet Jeremiah, passion is a fire that comes from God and it cannot be extinguished no matter the circumstances, no matter the difficulties. In Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9, the Bible states, but if I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, his words in me, in my heart, like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones, I am weary of holding it in, indeed I cannot. So we read in the book of Nehemiah, no matter the circumstances, difficult circumstances which Apostle Jeremiah, I mean Prophet Jeremiah was facing, he still continued to prophesy to the people of his day. He still continued to preach to the people of his day. That fire which comes from God could never be extinguished, even with threats and dangers. For Apostle Peter, passion is a compelling conviction that has to be obeyed no matter the persecution, no matter the dangers, no matter the afflictions. In Acts chapter 4, verses 18 to 20, the Bible states, And this is the same hungry. They called Peter and John. And the Bible says they commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. And so, in spite of the persecution, in spite of all the dangers, in spite of all the oppositions, Peter and John went ahead preaching the good news of salvation with greater determination and a greater passion. And the Bible says in one, their lifetime they were able to turn their world upside down. What a passion. For Paul the Apostle Passion is a crucified life lived by faith in Christ. Crucified life lived by faith in Christ. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, the Bible states, I have been crucified with Christ as I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see what Paul the Apostle is saying here. He so much believed in the cause 
which God has given to him. In the mission which God has given to him of propagating the gospel. Such that he is willing to lay down his life if need be for the sake of the gospel. He is willing to suffer, to die for the sake of letting people who live in darkness receive the light. He is willing to pay the ultimate price so that others can receive our Savior, Jesus Christ. What a passion. Beloved brothers and the sisters in the Lord, I pray that all of us individually and accordingly we can identify with Paul the Apostle. We can identify ourselves with Peter the Apostle, with Prophet Jeremiah. I pray that our souls be filled with passion of soul winning and may the fire of the Holy Spirit keep burning in us until God's word of harvest is reached. Second, historical examples of passion. You see, <laughs> brothers and sisters, sometimes when we talk about prophets, you know, we talk about apostles, there's a tendency on our part to say, you know what, they were prophets in the world. They were apostles in the world. What less do you expect from them? It is as if they were superhuman beings. But listen, brothers, they were humans just like us. And when we read church history, we find that there are men and the women who were endured by passion from on high who were made the apostles, no prophets. They were men and the women like you and me. They had busy schedules like ours. They had flesh and blood like ours. They could get tired like ours, like we, but the Bible tells us, I mean, church history tells us, they were able to reach out with the gospel to their generation and they literally transformed the cause of history of their generation through the power of the gospel. And I believe after looking few at few of them among many, none of us will have an excuse as to why we should not win America for Jesus. Wow. Church historian tell us that in the 18th century, God worked through a group of passionate European leaders 
to win millions of souls to Christ. Their passionate influence helped the church to take the gospel around the world and literally change the course of the world in Israel. As I look unto all of you today, I see history changes are in the house. Yeah. History makers are in the house. Yeah. Ask whenever you're ready. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. One of such men is John Wesley. John Wesley, in church history, is known to be the leader of revival in England and the United States. This is what he said, I quote, Let us all be of one business. We live only for this, to save our souls, our own souls, and the souls of those who hear us. What John Wesley is saying, yes, we have our own job. We have our own career and businesses. But on top of your job, which you do to earn a living. There is another job given to you by God Almighty. Hallelujah. And uh, that is one business we have to save our soul. And it's the souls of those out there without Christ. And then John Wesley is calling for all of us to engage wholeheartedly in this one business. We have. God used John Wesley to bring a revival and a transformation in England. And today, we are told, 60 million people all over the world owe their spiritual heritage to this passionate movement. The second example of passion in church history is by John Knox. In church history, John Knox is known to be the leader of revival in Scotland. And then uh, one day, church history tells us John Knox's wife pleaded, pleaded with, with him. My husband, you have been praying day and night for so long without rest. Why don't you come now and take a rest? And uh, John Knox answered back to his beloved wife. My wife, how can I sleep when my land is not safe? What a passion. What a burden. How can I sleep when my land is not safe? And the church history goes on to tell us. He would often pray all night, all day, 
in an agonizing tone, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. Lord, give me Scotland or I die. What a bad thing, what a passion. Indeed, God shook his person. Indeed, God gave him his person. Can we believe like John Knox? God to shake once again the United States of America. And the God to give us the continent of Africa for Jesus. Yeah. And the whole wide world for Jesus. Yeah. The third example of passion in church history is the person by the name George Whitefield. He was an 18th century British evangelist. He preached in Britain and in the United States. And I'm so happy to have prophets from Britain here with us. In his itineration as an evangelist, from town to town, city to city, state, to state and the nation to another nation. He used to pray out loudly. And this is how he prayed. Oh Lord, give me souls or take my soul. Oh Lord, give me souls or take my soul. To him, George Whitefield, living meant nothing. If people were not turning from the kingdom of Satan unto the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to live meant nothing. If people were not turning from the broad way which leads to hell and the eternal destruction to the narrow way which leads to eternal life and consequently unto heaven. It's better to die than me. And so he prayed, O oh Lord, give me souls, or take my soul. What a passion. What a burden. And it is said by church historians, his face shone like the face of Moses when he prayed that prayer. The fourth historical example of passion is by the person by the name William Booth. William Booth is known to be the founder of Salvation Army. And uh, church historians tell us the King of England asked Booth to come for a meal in the overall mansion of the king of England. And as they were dining and enjoying the meal, then the king posed a question to brother William Booth. William, what the ruling force 
of your life is. William, what is the passion of your life? And William gazed upon the king. And then both replied, Sir, some man's passion is for money. And the other man's passion is for fame. And the other man's passion is for position. But my passion, my passion is for soul. you right now, turn to your left and your right or behind and ask the person sitting beside you, what is your passion? Ask him more about it. and make sure you get an answer. Make sure you get an answer. <laughs> Supernatural harvest has come. 
and I received the moment I received the opportunity the time for extraordinary progress has come in Matthew chapter 9 verse 36 to 38 The Bible speaks. <coughs> the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Again, whose report will you believe? I will believe the report. Of the Lord. And the report of the Lord says the harvest is plenty. I mean, it is plenty. It's not scarcity. There is a bumper harvest of souls for the kingdom of God. It's plenty. Hallelujah. And upon completion of my message, I will pray with you. If we all decide, we Jesus power people, if we all decide with the zeal and the intention to do something for the Lord, of bringing souls into the kingdom, into this house, I guarantee you, by December of this year, we will double. Yeah. I mean, we will double. Yeah. And by December next year, we will triple. And the year after, we will quadruple. Yeah. And then multiplication will continue. Yeah. And they continue. Yeah. And they continue. Yeah. I mean, and they continue. Yeah. And I release that anointing of the Bible yeah. to you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Jesus 
has commanded you and me in Mark 16 verse 15 to go into all the world and preach the good gospel to all creation. Preach the gospel to all creation. Beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, I pray for us all today that we will fully experience God's passion for the harvest in our life. For we are God vessels of harvest. For we are God's agent of harvest. We are God missional people. You see, the Father sent the Son, Jesus Christ. The Son sent the Spirit of God who dwells in us who abides in us. And the Spirit indwells in us, sending us out into the darkness of this world to implement the victory that Jesus accomplished at the cross of Calvary. So that those who sit in darkness might be brought out of that darkness and unto his marvelous, marvelous, marvelous light. In Tanzania, God is reigniting the Tanzania Saints of God Church and the body of Christ with Godly passion for the great harvest of winning the lost world with the gospel than ever before. And we use church planting as our main means of doing evangelism. And we have seen it is very powerful. It is very effective. For all the places where churches have been planted, people are transformed. Not only spiritually, but people are transformed socially, psychologically, intellectually, physiologically, economically, socially, and all aspects of their lives. And I bless you, Apostle Victor, and the Jesus Power Church for your vision of church planting. I am here to affirm you. Keep on keeping on. That's the right to trap Jesus Power. When I took over, I took over the office of general superintendent back in 2008 for 69 years. Tanzania Centers of God had only 2,600 churches. 2,600. And since then, the Lord has done an impossible. Had made, had made the impossible possible. Up to now, as I speak, we have over 14,600 churches. And 
as I speak right now in the next three years, 2023 to 2025, we already have commitment of planting over seven southern churches. Our goal in the next 13 years is to raise up 35 southern new pastors, to plant 30 southern new churches, to add 7.7 .7 million new members in our fellowship. You see Jesus power. Where there is a way, there is a way. Tell your neighbor, where there is a way, there is a way. And what is impossible with man is possible with God. And never ever forget what the Bible says. We can do all things through Christ who give us strength. Beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, let me tell you, I mean, our, our church planting strategy is very simple. Very simple. We identify a church planter with a zeal, with a body, with a passion. And the Lord has spoken to us. There are many, many, many people whom he has called unto this ministry. Because this is the heartbeat of God. But there is no one to empower them. If we are willing to empower them, God is going to give us and to give them unto us. And as we travel the country, calling those people whom God has called in reaching the unreached to come forth and identify themselves. We are amazed by what we, by what we see. Thousands and thousands of young and old, of male and female, are coming forward under the power of the Holy Spirit, declaring that God has called them to go into the dark corners of our country and enrich our people with the gospel. And so we gather those men and women who are called. What they are calling is ringing loud and clear in their hands. We bring them in what we call church planting schools. We train them for five months, covering. 14 courses which will empower them to plant a church and be able to sustain it. And then commission them to go in already listed areas in the order of gravity to go and plant a church. And once they go there, they become as part of a new church. Simple. Hallelujah! <laughs> Let me tell you a story of one of our church planters by the name Pastor Thomas. The Lord called our church planter Thomas and his wife to go and plant a new church on the slope of Mount Kilimanjaro Amen. in an area called Rombo. As they were going on with the work, one night the Lord awakened Thomas to take his wife 
and they go high up the mountain to pray an overnight prayer. They both obeyed, left the house, and they went to pray. And as they prayed, looking down from the mountain, they saw their enemies from another religious group come to their house, bar the doors, and set fire to the such roof. Thomas and his wife lost everything, but thank God, their lives were spared. When they walked the village the next morning, most people thought they were seeing ghosts. The fire caused a great loss, but the safety of Thomas and his wife caused the people to listen to his bold proclamation of the gospel. And that led to salvation of several in the area. And now, from this one church alone, 30 new churches have been started. And these 30 churches have also reached out and now they have planted 172 new daughter congregations to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, as I conclude, I ask that, I pray that we will be filled with God's passion for the lost. I pray that may God's passion become our passion. I ask that God fill us with his fire from on high, just as he filled our church planter Thomas. Just as he filled prophet Jeremiah, Peter the apostle, and Paul the apostle. I ask that God fill us with his fire from on high, just as he filled Brother John Wesley, Brother John Knox, George Whitefield, and William Booth. For our God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. I pray all of our hearts will burn with passion flame that will never go out until the harvest is complete or oh, until Christ take us home. I will pray, I pray that we will follow the example of Christ's passion to seek and to save which is lost until Columbus, Ohio, United States, Tanzania, Ghana, Kenya, South Africa, and the whole wide world come to Jesus. And today, Jesus' power, as you go out from this place, I want you to know, yes, God brought you in the United States to participate in the national development of the United States. 
But that's not only the end of the story. I believe God has gathered you from all over the world here in United States to become a transformational agent of this great nation. I mean, spiritual transformation agent of this great nation. The same God who used Daniel and his friends to transform Babylon in a foreign country, he is with you. He can use you. I said, he is with you and he can mightily use you. And therefore, I encourage each one of you to reach people in our neighborhood, in our schools, to reach our fellow workers, our fellow students, our relatives, and reach everywhere with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. And as you depart from this day, from this place, today, and the weeks to come, and the years to come, I charge you in Jesus' mighty name to go out and preach the good news of salvation to all the people and the communities around. Go out and speak life where there is death. Jesus' power, go out and speak love where there is hate. Go out and speak truth where there is life. Go out and speak salvation where there is sin. Go out and speak hope where there is fear. Go out and speak healing where there is sickness and diseases. Go out and speak freedom where there is addiction. Go out and speak new creation where there is decay and the destruction. For behold, Jesus makes all things passing away and the Christ makes all things anew again. For I believe in this world there is not a single individual who is beyond the help of our Almighty God. Jesus can save. Jesus can heal. Jesus can deliver. His power far surpasses any other power. His greatness far surpasses any other great greatness. His authority far surpasses any other authority. That's why I believe with all my heart that Jesus and only Jesus is the true answer for our world today. And let's give him glory and honor. our nation, 
and the beyond with the gospel. You are here, you are saying, Pastor, I want to be recommit my life, rekindle my passion of harvest, of souls into the kingdom of God. The Bible says, pray and it shall be given unto you. Seek and then you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Jesus is here to reignite your passion for harvest. And you are in need of prayer. You say, I want to be prayed for. Wherever you are, just put up your hand. I will pray with you. For God to use you mightily in so winning. For God to use you mightily in reaching our nation for Christ. I will pray with you and I trust God with you that your passion for harvest will be ignited. There are many hands all over. All over. As musicians are praying, come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Oh, la I ask also the pastor and the general superintendent and here stand with me. Bola bakoshina na maya. Lepo bapasaka na manete lepo. Make your way forward. Let us come and believe God for salvation of our nation. Let us come and believe God for the salvation of the whole white world. Let us come and consecrate ourselves and sanctify ourselves to be used by God to bring souls unto the kingdom of God. Let us come and rekindle our passion for harvest. Shevoritana makoboposi. Rekatana makoboposi kono meka. Lebo koshinda na makoba bosaka. Lebo kono mekoba basaya. And maybe you are here, you are saying, Pastor, I'm not yet born again. I'm not yet saved. I want to be born again. I want to surrender my life unto Jesus. I want to make him to be my Lord and Savior. You are not yet born again. And you want to be born again. You are not yet saved. Oh, and you want to be saved. Will you put up your hand? I will also pray for you. Is there anybody in the house? Put up your hand, please, wherever you are. Let us now, all of us in the house, let us put up our hands on high and let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your people, O God, who has come forth and all the people around this auditorium who have received this message. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you are the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for you are called upon our lives to reach the unreached and to harvest our world with the gospel for your glory and for the expansion of your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that may your hand and be upon your people in a special way. I pray that, Lord, be 
the river, run up the roads and praise the Lord, hallelujah.